So thanks for the introduction. I guess we can uh, go a little bit faster over this slide. Um, besides uh, everything that was just mentioned, we are also busy with uh, two uh, IP uh, components or products within Realdolma. For me, that's security runtime. And during the presentation, we will come to it uh, a little bit more in detail. And uh, next to me is uh, Johan. Yes, good morning, everybody. My name is Johan Kums. I also am busy with uh, a separate project next to my day-to-day -day, uh, work for Realdolman. I'm um, busy for a couple of years now with C4SOA. We also mentioned that during the, the presentation, a little more in detail. Um, and we're now building this product together with Real Dolman. Um, that's me. If you want to contact me, uh, please feel free. Um, today we are going to talk, you, to talk about the enabling company platform. We are building for Proximus, uh, one of the largest uh, telco providers in uh, Belgium. We are going to tell you something about the solution architecture we put there in place. Um, we will be uh, introducing to a number of our assets we publish on that platform and how we uh, try to sell it to the market, how we um, approach the market. Um, we are going to tell you something about our marketplace for the digital economy of uh, Proximus. We, uh, as Real Dolman, we have a whole team there at Proximus. We are going to introduce uh, some of the things um, worth mentioning about that team and the way how we uh, work, organize ourselves. And um, to conclude the session, we uh, will provide you some key takeaways, you should, things you should remember about our platform and our, about our presentation. Chris will now introduce you to the enabling company platform and solution architecture. So what exactly is enabling company? Uh, the project started from the innovation corner within, uh, within Proximus. Um, and by the way, it's online. You can navigate through it later on the day. Uh, and actually, they are trying to create an ecosystem for exposing assets. Assets can be internal telco services but also external partners can provide and co come up with assets. Uh, all those assets are most of the time based on APIs, but can also be services, cloud ser services, or uh, real physical products. Um, as mentioned in, in earlier talks, we really believe that um, if you want to encourage partners to getting started with your product, you have to build a great product yourself. Uh, so we love developers and we try to uh, enforce them uh, and uh, provide them with the best uh, APIs and best documentation that's possible. Um, the other lines uh, within the slides, I will come back in uh, the next slide, which will make things a little bit clearer. So what is it? It's an ecosystem of existing of multiple assets. We will go a little bit more in depth uh, within the, the next slide. Um, and the, the focus should be on the self-service aspect, enabling partners, enabling developers to get started with those uh, APIs. So first of all, API driven, of course. But we went the extra mile. We are also uh, providing components where the, the partner can do integrations themselves. And again, we will uh, make this uh, really concrete uh, with, the, with the use case. And of course, we are also providing monitoring and alerting because we are not just targeting a, a developer platform or a prototyping platform, but we really want to make sure partners can go in production and uh, deliver as a lazy. And if things go wrong, uh, uh, provide them with uh, the tools and information to, be, to debug everything. The next aspect is the data brokering, which uh, Johan is going to talk a little bit more. Um, and last but not least, the marketplace. In the end, you want to sell uh, services and also provide the partners the ability to sell their services on top of it. So if we arrange the same boxes, 
um, within the, the Enconi, uh, enabling company platform. And you get API manager, an integration part, monitoring the marketplace, brokering, and different assets. Now let's make things a little bit more tangible. And let's uh, focus on, on SEAS, which stands for Sensors as a Service. It's an IoT asset where you have LoRa-based devices. LoRa is a low-power, long-range technology um, where you can uh, send uh, uh, small values, typically sensor values, uh, to uh, the network. And the, the really cutting-edge advantage is that um, sensors have a battery lifetime up to 10 years. So that's quite new. Uh, but it can also be IP-based IP devices. Actually, we support every kind of device. So we have an uh, incoming uh, integration need over there. And the way Proximus or most telcos are handling that kind of integration the past years is on a project base. You have your kind of device, your binary payload, and you have to go through an integration project w which describes and analyzes all the, the payloads. We are um, delivering an integration component where the developer can make the definitions itself. So if you're just uh, creating uh, uh, your uh, login into the platform, you can do everything in just under one hour. And that's really new within the, the, the telecom uh, business and uh, that's the new um, dynamic we like to introduce. And it's not only inbound, you can also uh, uh, do outbound provisioning. You can go with your data to other cl uh, cloud solutions, like, for example, Azure, but also uh, Amazon, or your own backend uh, integration system. So if we map the WS2 products, most of the assets are implemented uh, within the application server. Uh, assets can be uh, created by Proximus, but also by partners. Uh, as a partner, you can say, okay, I like the SEAS uh, asset, I like the uh, USD asset. Johan will go a little bit more into detail what uh, the differences are. Uh, but I have my, my own logic, uh, and I uh, create a new asset on top, combining others. And I want to re-expose it on the platform. That's possible. We have the enterprise bus for integrations with uh, other systems, uh, incoming uh, binary traffic, uh, other legacy systems within the, the, tech, the telco uh, architecture are perhaps file-based. Um, we are dealing with a lot of uh, not optimal um, interfaces. And we, of course, we have the API management. And we have the identity server, which is uh, doing uh, uh, quite heavy work because all of our, our identities are not stored within the platform itself. We have a federated uh, approach where they can come from uh, Facebook, uh, the, the Proximus uh, EIM, but also external uh, solution uh, identity providers. And because uh, I already uh, talked a little bit that um, external partners can also come up with their assets, that's where the security runtime comes into place. And it's uh, a product uh, of Real Dolma, uh, where um, other partners can run or execute code, code that's from a prox proximus perspective untrusted, in a secured way with certain policies. But if you want to know uh, more about that product, please contact me later on. There's also a, a second product we are uh, using within the platform, which is uh, C4SOA. And it's actually really, uh, it, it's, uh, um, it has a, a value within a semantic way of discovering things. For example, if you're creating a public IoT platform, uh, you want to know the temperature uh, in, within a certain room. But because the devices are public, uh, not everyone is, is calling temperature the same. Or some sensors are providing it uh, in Celsius, on the others in Fahrenheit. And actually, you just want to say, for my application, I want to know the temperature in this room or the pro proximity of this room within Celsius. And how you get the data, I don't have to know. I don't want to know the device ID. I just want to get the temperature. That's where this uh, component comes into place. But again, if you want to know more, uh, you are next to me is uh, the export for that product. So. Um, 
the first asset is uh, the, the IoT one, uh, the sensor as a service. Um, so, yeah, of course, everything is an API. You can come up with uh, your own sensors. Uh, we are also writing device libraries just to uh, lower the drample and to, get to really make things really easy. You don't have to have a degree in electronics. Um, things are almost idiot-proof. Yes, um, so um, very important to mention is that the Yanko platform is not meant to be uh, a platform solely for IoT assets. We are also publishing other kinds of assets, for example, uh, a number of telco assets, assets that are currently available deep down in the enterprise of Proximus, but the, these assets are not usable uh, via or for partners or developers or ISVs, and that's why we are publishing these assets as APIs on top of our platform. So for example, Location Insights, it's, uh, it's, it will be, or it is an API that is able, that enables you to query uh, location coordinates captured by the cellular network. So for example, using that API, you, you will be uh, able to um, see how groups of people are flowing through the city, for example. So for example, you can use that information uh, within the context of retail, smart cities, traffic management, and so forth. So in fact, we are creating an anonymized digital footprint of all digital or all mobile devices on our network, and we use that information to, to analyze how people behave uh, within the, a certain reason, a region or a certain uh, uh, city. Another um, asset we are uh, currently implementing is directory information services. It's an API that enables you to search our address directory. So the yellow pages and the white pages of Belgium, uh, very well known as 1207. It's a website where you can use, where you can uh, search the address linked to a, a phone number or vice versa. And now you will be able to do the same thing using an API and use that API within your business application. Another asset is, uh, is the USSD asset, which will uh, enable you to exchange USSD messages uh, using an API in the same way as uh, you can integrate with our all other um, APIs, so the same uniform way of accessing things, um, identity and access management will be the same for all these assets, and um, more assets will come in the in the near future. Its first step is let's identify which assets we are going to publish. But a very important uh, step that has to follow is how are we going to the market, to the public with these assets. The, the main goal is to, uh, to gain money with, with our assets. So it's very important to also have a marketplace in our architecture, which can be used by our partners, by our consumers, uh, to um, find, buy and couple uh, their businesses with our digital assets and services and APIs. So for that, we are using the Clear Media uh, Marketplace tool. Uh, Clear Media is a Proximus company, in fact. And we are integrating this Clear Media Marketplace with our API manager. So a number of APIs um, are there to, to, uh, to get the list of assets available, for example. Um, and the, the, the idea of this uh, marketplace is to um, contain all sorts of assets, Proximus assets, uh, partner assets, but also assets you create as a developer by combining um, already existing assets and you put your own logic, your own business value around it, and you can put it in, in our marketplace and sell it in the same way as we do for our own assets. So the very important um, aspect there is that it's, uh, it should be an ecosystem of APIs, assets, that are not telco, uh, solely telco-oriented, that are not only from Proximus, but are also assets that can come from different areas, different domains. And very important there is that the, the main goal is to, to increase revenue based on this new uh, way of doing business. This digital economy is very important for, uh, for Proximus. 
Chris already mentioned it. Um, the idea is to uh, federate identities. So we are not storing all identities on our platform itself. We are federating identities coming, for example, in this case from Clear Media, but also it's, uh, it's uh, possible to use our APIs, to use our assets um, using Google account, Facebook account, for example. And that's why identity server is a very uh, crucial component in our architecture. A number of um, slides to get to give you uh, an overview of our marketplace. It's, uh, these are mock-up screens. It's uh, uh, work in progress. We are currently building um, the UI for this uh, marketplace. So the idea is to get a list of all possible assets you can buy. More detail about these uh, specific uh, assets. A small world worth about uh, our team. So we are uh, 10, uh, approximately 10 people of Real Dolman that are uh, busy on a day-to-day -day basis on the uh, enabling company uh, platform. Um, we're building a product. Um, we are based in the innovation space of Proximus. Um, and in fact, it was um, quite a challenge to to, uh, to morph into digital thinkers in a productized uh, fashion. We are working in a productized fashion, and we were used to uh, working in a project-oriented uh, fashion, so it, it has been uh, taking a while before we, we were uh, fully um, um, yeah, aware of this other way of uh, doing things. We, in fact, we are working within Proximus as a, as a sort of uh, pirates in startup mode. Um, we are uh, based in the innovation uh, department, so we, we, we have the, the chance to, uh, to, to test things out, to, to work in an MVP style, to, to uh, see, okay, this feature, this asset, how does it go in the, in the market, how, how people react to it, what is their feedback, and, and then change the, the features in the way the people or the, the, uh, the public wants to see our product. We are uh, working in an agile way. Uh, we have our own uh, Scrum-based methodology. It's always, you always uh, tailor that to your specific needs within your, uh, within your team or within your organization. So we all also did that. To conclude the session, um, a number of key takeaways. Um, really important is this uh, self-service aspect. Uh, Isabel uh, yesterday also mentioned that API management and the publishing of APIs um, at the edge of your company is becoming very, very important to, to be a, a digital predator and not to be um, a prey at, in some, uh, some time. So API management is also a very important aspect of our, um, of our platform. We are publishing all kinds of APIs in the same uniform, easy to use, um, developer-friendly uh, fashion. Chris already mentioned also the integration aspect. We are uh, a bit changing the way uh, people or partners can integrate with this uh, enabling company platform. We are also um, putting that self-service aspect in there. Um, people will be able to configure their integration um, or the coupling points themselves, they don't have to wait for us to integrate their system with the ANCO system. They can start using our tools, our assets um, by themselves based on our documentation. Of course, if they need support, we can uh, provide them support, of course. The data brokering aspect, um, say us, for example, the sensor as a service uh, API is uh, used to um, these measurements coming from the LoRa network, we store them on the platform and we uh, publi publish this data again as, a, as an API towards the uh, outside world. You can use this API to fetch your own data, but if you uh, make um, data public, you can, can also use other ones' um, data in the same, same way. So um, it's, you, you will be able to, to, um, to use data from others. You can sell and resell data stored on our, uh, on our platform. I just mentioned the marketplace. It's uh, very important to monetize these telco assets, these partner assets, even your assets if you um, provide an API um, based on, on already existing APIs or a completely new API. 
you can monetize in the same way as, um, as everyone else uh, within our marketplace. That's about it. 